Welcome to the Irresistible You podcast. This is the place to get a dose of empowerment to create the life you crave and deserve. I'm your host, Amy Beltran, CEO and founder of Irresistible University. I'm here to help you love yourself, drop the body image issues so you can lose the emotional weight and gain the confidence to look and feel irresistible at any size. Welcome back to the podcast. Today, I'm talking about a situation and a scenario that I know you have probably found yourself in once, twice, maybe multiple times. I know for me, this happened several times, and this was part of the yo-yo diet, body hate, shame cycle, and it just got to the point where I literally can't ever go through this again, which is why I went on my journey, which is why I created the framework, which is why I now help other women learn how to use that in their life, because this will actually drive you crazy. Now, this is a situation where let's say, um, and for me, so I'm going to, I'm going to just give you an example from my life. So this used to happen to me quite often. And it was usually during the change of seasons when you would go from cold to hot. It was never the other way around. (laughs) Um, And that's because, let's say, you know, when it's cold, I'm wearing leggings and jeans and pants and stretchy clothes and sweaters and baggier things um, covering up most of your body. And now, because I live in Virginia, we don't really have a spring. So it pretty much goes from cold to hot (laughs) overnight, it seems like. And there I would be standing in front of my closet, standing in front of my full length mirror, and not able to fit into any of my spring or summer clothes. And I would put shorts on, they wouldn't budge over my knees. I would put on a, um, a top that was sleeveless, wouldn't button up, wouldn't fit, and I was mortified when I would see the size of my arms. And here I am with literally nothing to wear. And I have to go, like I have to go to work, or I have to go to an event or whatever. And I would stand there angry and upset and sad and I could feel my cheeks getting hot and the tears start coming down my face and there goes there goes all my makeup right and I remember thinking like how did I let this happen again how the hell did I gain back all of the weight again Amy you're such a loser how did you let this happen again And it was always that stress on again. How did you get here again? And then I would start with beating myself up. You know, I can't ever stick to a weight loss plan. I'll never get to my goal weight. This is never going to work for me. I'm always going to be fat and miserable. I'm always going to hate my body. I can't believe this is me. I'm broken. And this is literally one of the worst feelings in this process. So much so that this like exact feeling is the thing that propels me forward, that keeps me motivated, that keeps me inspired because I refuse to ever go back to feeling that way again because it's just awful. It's awful. And you have probably stood in the mirror and had the same conversation with yourself, the same nasty words to yourself, told yourself you were broken. I am here to tell you None of that is true. You're not broken. And it's not that you can't stick to a plan. It's not that you'll never get to your goal weight. It's not that you'll never be able to love your, okay. And the truth of the matter is, you're having this conversation. You're beating yourself up. You're, you're in disbelief of how did this happen? How did I get here? How did I gain all this weight? Let's keep it real and be honest with ourselves you know exactly how you got here. There's literally one way that you got here. There's one, 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 one way that you got here, but there's a million and one excuses that you use because you don't want to admit the truth of how you got here. And the faster you can start admitting the truth, the faster you can stop being in denial about things, the faster you will be able to break the cycle, okay? Now, the reason you got here, that number one reason that I'm talking about, you got here because you stuffed food in your face. You got here because you were overeating. There is not another excuse. That's it. It's not the stress. 
It's not the new baby and the new schedule. It's not the new job and the long commute. It's not the layoff and getting depressed. It's not the new partner and the 25 love pounds that you gain from going out to eat every day. It's not any of those things. It's from you putting food in your mouth. That's it. You know, it starts, it's one of these situations, it's, I call it gradually, then suddenly, right? It's like, well, a little donut here, a box of cupcakes there. Ooh, let's do some door dashing. Let's, let's get some Uber Eats, and then let's order everything on the menu. You know, let's go out to eat and do appetizer meal, um, dessert and, the whole, and drinks and the whole nine, multiple days a week. And it's a culmination of all these choices that seem small, that seem insignificant, but they're not because they add up. And over time, those things start to add up. And it's the same thing when you're losing weight. It doesn't seem like in the moment of choosing the salad over the burger is a big deal. It doesn't seem like in the moment of, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and bake this and not fry this. It doesn't seem like, I'm going to pass on that cupcake. That just seems like, oh, this isn't doing anything. But when a few months go by and you add up all those little choices that you've been making, you're like, oh, damn, I feel better. I look better. The weight's coming off. The same thing with the weight gain. It's the same way. We like to say that it's easier to lose it or easier to gain it than it is to lose it. And that's actually not true. It's the same process. It just might be more fun to eat, but the results are going to suck. Because then you're going to go, oh, my God, how did I get here? You know exactly how you got here, okay? You got here because you decided with the long commute and the long hours and the new baby, you'd rather plop your ass down on the couch and watch TV and have a Netflix binge session for the next three days. And the only time you moved your body was to get up from the couch to go to the kitchen or to get up to go get DoorDash from, from the door. And then you wonder how you got here. Because in the moment, that felt better to you than... I'm going to push myself. I'm going to get outside and get some fresh air and take a walk. Because in the moment, that felt better to you to just plop down on the couch for three days. But you've got to understand and you've got to admit that the only thing. So here's, here was like a really big moment for me. And this like turned the light bulb on for me years ago. When I realized that the only thing. One of the only things in my life that I have full control over is what goes in my mouth. I can't control my family members getting a disease, getting cancer, passing away, something bad happening in my life. I can't control any of that stuff. But I can control what goes in my mouth. No one is sitting there shoving food down your throat, tying you down to the couch and making you watch Netflix for three days. You are choosing that. It is a choice. And so what I want to talk about is when you have that moment of how did I get here? How it really happens. Because ultimately it is because you're shoving the food down your throat and you're not moving and you're not doing anything. But there's some underlying stuff that I want to talk through. And the, the next piece of that is denial, okay? When you are in the season of overeating, you know, laying around on the couch in your free time and all that kind of nonsense, you are usually in denial while you're doing it. And so you make excuses. Well, I, I just had a bad day at work today, so I'm going to order, like, all of this on DoorDash. Oh, well, I had a bad day today, so I'm going to go through the drive through and I'm really hungry because I am so important that I didn't have time to eat lunch today because I was busy, so I'm going to upsize the combo, right? There's this, like, let me brag about the fact that I forgot to eat bullshit. That's not cute. It's not cute because it's going to catch up to you later. OK, so you're in denial, you're making excuses. And then even when you like, you know, you're overeating, like we know we're overeating when we're doing it. Right. But we're like, oh, that was just today. I had a rough day. Well, then there's tomorrow and the next day and next week. And it all starts to add up. And even when the clothes, when your clothes start to get a little snug, 
So your jeans are starting to dig into your stomach and you're getting that like you take your jeans off and you can see where they were all day because they're digging in your, your skin. Well, it's just because it's that time of month. I'm bloated, right? All these little things. Oh, I, I must have thrown my shirt in the dryer for too long. And you start making these bullshit excuses because you're in so much denial that you are the one causing this to happen, right? And this was me. I remember um, like my shorts not going up over my knees when I gained almost 100 pounds when I graduated high school. And I was just like, oh, I don't like wearing shorts anymore. I don't like those shorts. And I had some like snotty response to it, still had the entitled attitude, right? Or, um, you know, I just like wearing skirts. Yeah, stretchy skirts. That was me, okay? So you're in denial, even though your clothes are telling you you're gaining weight. And when it's starting to happen, rather than face it head on and deal with it now, you start zoning out and pretending like it's not happening. And the way that you zone out and the way that you deal with it is that you use food because that is your only coping mechanism. So instead of facing the problem, you door dash it, right? You hit up the drive through You do, you know, go order your favorite meal and eat every last bite of it. And so you're zoning out. You're in denial. You can't believe it's happening. And another part of denial is hiding. You're hiding from the rest of the world. You're hiding where, oh, I, I really like wearing this sweater. Oh, I really like wearing this big, you know, shirt over top of everything. Denial, denial, denial. You know, I've shared this story several times, but... I was in such denial when I gained a shit ton of weight that my ankle boots that I loved, I thought they were so cute, they didn't zip. They wouldn't even zip over my ankles, for goodness sakes. So instead of just admitting that I was clearly gaining a lot of weight, that I clearly couldn't wear these shoes right now, I was like, oh no, I'm going to rock this new style with some unzipped boots because that's really freaking cute. And so denial shows up in lots of ways, lots of ways. And denial and overeating are like BFFs, okay? Um, not, just a quick example, another thing of denial is going out to eat with friends, acting like you're not hungry, boxing up your food, or not ordering anything. And what do you do? On the way home, you hit up the drive through get the big size combo, or you go home and you eat all of your food in one sitting. That's another form of denial when we're talking about weight, okay? The other thing that's going on when you're in this season of putting the weight on and then waking up, it's like you think you're Snow White. You think you're Snow White and you are Sleeping Beauty. You think you're Sleeping Beauty. You went into this deep sleep and, oh, my God, all of a sudden, how did this happen? How did I get here? Like, come on. You know how you got here, right? The other way or the other, the other like, form that this shows up in is that you have no self-love. And when you don't have self-love, when you don't have love for yourself, you don't take accountability. And when you're not taking accountability, you're walking around and living inside of the fat girl entitlement mindset. And the fat girl entitlement mindset is, I deserve this. I had a bad day, so I'm special, and I deserve to eat. And... That fat girl entitlement mindset, you will do just about anything to get what you want. You can be manipulative. You can tell people, like, you've probably got enablers in your life. And when you're in that mindset, nothing's going to stop you because, oh, my God, you deserve it because you had a bad day and nobody else in the world ever has a bad day. Right? So when you are in a place of not loving yourself, you lack accountability. And when you lack accountability and self-love, you're not putting yourself as a priority in your life. And when you're not a priority in your life, why would you care about taking care of your body? Why do you care? You don't, right? And so when you love yourself, that gives you the ability to own up and be accountable and responsible to your actions, and when you're in the fat girl entitled mindset, you are in denial that 
anything is your responsibility when it comes to food and weight, even though, hello, it's your body and your mouth. But it's not your responsibility. It's not your fault. It's because you're stressed out. It's because so-and-so broke up with you. It's because so-and-so doesn't like you and unfriended you on Facebook, right? Nothing is your fault. You're not accountable to the food that goes in your mouth or the weight on your body. And when you start believing in yourself, when you start loving yourself, that's also a part of taking accountability. Because when you have a healthy relationship with yourself, you're like, you know what? Mm Mm-mm. I got to own up to that. That's my responsibility and I'm going to be accountable to me. And you realize that that's honestly the only thing you have control over is what goes in your mouth and being accountable to yourself. There are two things that you can control in this life. And then you also take accountability without having a pity party. You look at yeah, I, sh- I ordered all that stuff last night. I just saw my bill from DoorDash. And you know what? I could really do better next time. That's it. Move on. You literally see, you're able to see your actions and what you do as a metric. It's a learning, it's a learning metric to say, okay, I ordered way too much food last night. I could definitely do better next time. And I will. And the, this is just a tool in your toolbox, a way for you to course correct and move the hell on with your life. We don't need to have a two-day pity party because what is that going to do for you? And when you're accountable to yourself, you don't allow yourself to have this ongoing pity party. Maybe you do for an hour and that's healthy and that's cool. The other thing too is when you are not in an accountability, self-love place and you're in the fat girl entitled mindset, you also have all or nothing thinking. And it's like, well, I'm so busy. I have so much going on that I don't have time to meal, to meal plan. I don't have time to prep my meals. I don't have time to think about what we're going to have for dinner. I don't have time to go exercise because you're so effing special. And you don't have time because you're so busy and you're so special. Yeah, but what's that doing for you? What's it doing for you? It ain't doing nothing for you. It's, it's, it's making your life a living hell, you know? And so dropping that, that self-love is like, you know what? I don't have 90 minutes to go to an exercise class or go to the gym, but you know what I do have? I have 20 minutes. And if I could do something for 20 minutes without wanting to like die from doing it, That's a hell of a lot better than plopping my ass down on the couch and eating M&Ms and watching Hulu, right? So when you have self-love and you're accountable to yourself, you also know that you're going to be realistic with, with what you have and that you're not just doing this all or nothing stuff. Because who has time for anything? Like I hear people tell me, well, I'm busy, Amy. I don't have time to join your program right now. Okay, so what are you doing? What are you doing then instead? Oh, I know. You're zombie walking through life telling yourself, I'll get to that tomorrow. I'll get to that tomorrow. I'll get to that tomorrow. And the next thing you know, you wake up one morning, put your shorts on. They won't go over your knees. And you're going, oh, my God, how the hell did this happen? It happened because you took no accountability. It happened because you have no love for yourself. It happened because you were in denial. And it happened because you shoved food in your, in your face. And that leads me to the next thing. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, I need you to go back and listen to last week's podcast episode where I talk about zombie walking. It also happens and you're overeating because you're zombie walking through your life. And so just to give you a quick rundown on what that is, zombie walking through life is like you're like one of those zombies on The Walking Dead. And you're just wandering around life and acting as if everything's happening to you, acting as if you have no part and no responsibility for anything going on in your damn life. And you're a victim to everything. If you are that person who complains and finds the negative in every single situation, 
I'm talking to you, boo. The zombie walkers just think that this is how it is. This is just my life. It'll always be like this. I have no control. And the zombie walkers don't ever stop and question things. Because when you stop and question things, that's how you start breaking the pattern. That is how you throw a wrench in the yo-yo diet body hate shame cycle. Stop, drop, and roll, baby. You got to stop and you got to question. And that's how you start breaking patterns instead of just walking through life like you're a damn zombie. Wake up. Wake up. So when you're zombie walking through life, you're not feeling things. You're not questioning things. You're just accepting that this is just the way things are. And you just, and that the zombie walker is the one who's always saying, I can't stick to anything because you keep trying to stick to the same thing, hoping for different results. And then when you don't get different results, you're like, oh, I suck, blah, blah, blah. I mean, come on. So the next thing um, that you're, when you're in this zone and you're overeating and you don't know how you got here is because you're not mindful. And one of the, uh, so in my Irresistible You signature program, I teach the Irresistible You framework. The Irresistible You framework has five steps, or five, I call them five guiding principles because they're not linear steps. And one of the guiding principles is called be in the moment. And be in the moment is when you are mindful. It is when, it is literally the opposite of zombie walking. Being in the moment is when, you are self-aware of what is going on around you. It is when you realize that you have a responsibility and an accountability to take control of areas of your life that you can plan for, that you can control. So when we're talking about weight and body image and all this kind of stuff, you know, this is when you're thinking ahead. You're planning and tracking your meals. You're drinking water every day. You are doing a morning journal as the catalyst for your day. I do a morning journal every single morning. And today my my morning was rushed and it was crazy and I did not get a chance to do it. And I kid you not, it was like all of a sudden I felt the anxiety like rising and I was like, whoa, wait a second. Uh Uh-uh, let's fix this. Because doing that morning journal it sets the tone for the day and it gets all the crap out of your head. So being in the moment and staying mindful of your choices, of what goes in your mouth, of how you're moving your body, of how you're living your life and not zombie walking, the person who stays in the moment and is a mindful person doesn't wake up six months from now and go, oh my God, how did I get here? No. No. They're just like, okay. You know, they don't wake up and go, oh, my God, I gained 50 pounds. And if they did, they knew that it already had. They, like, came to, uh, what's the word? Like, it wasn't a surprise, right? But most people, if they're being mindful and staying in the moment, they're not going to wake up with 50 pounds and go, where'd this come from? (laughs) Oh, I can't imagine where this came from. So... Another thing, too, is when you are waking up one day going, how did I get here? How did I gain all this weight? I told you there's one way. You put too much food in your mouth. And that's because, but then you blame it on all this other stuff. You have all these excuses. Well, you put food in your mouth because you don't have any other way to cope with things in your life. And so that's easy for you to say, well, it's because I'm stressed out. Well, it's because someone called me a name. Well, it's because this happened. Well, it's because that happened. Because you don't know any other way to cope with anything in your life. So it's a very easy cop out to say, no, I gained the weight because I, I was having a really hard time. And so when you don't have any other coping mechanisms, when you don't have any other tools or resources in your tool belt, and you've only used food basically your entire life to cope with anything bad going on, what do you expect? 
What do you expect? But what have you done to change that? And if you've never done anything different to change that, why in the world would you expect anything to be different this time? Yeah, well, I'll just get back to the six-week diet plan. What's that doing for you? What did that do for you the last 25 times that you tried it and failed at it? What has that done for you? So you have to find other ways to cope with things going on in your life. And one of the things I mean by that is, and this is, I'm giving you some more stuff here, like this is one of the other guiding principles is you have to feed your soul. And to feed your soul means I don't just spend my free time Netflixing and chilling on the couch. Now listen, I love a Netflix binge just as much as everybody does. And I need those like veg out times in my life. But if I'm doing that all the time in my spare time, there's a problem for me. And this comes with knowing you and knowing your personality and knowing what you need to fill up your life in other ways. Because if you're just going to work every day, if you're just taking care of your kids every day, if you're just cooking dinner and taking care of your house and doing the mundane stuff that we have to do just to survive and you're not filling in the the white space or you're not making white space for anything else, you're going to be pissed off. You're going to feel resentful. And you're just like, I'm just going to sit on the couch and eat. Right? And so for me, The way I fill my cup, the way I feed my soul is I like to get outside. Now, this 90 degree, 100 degree weather has got me like, I am like pressed. Like I am done with it. I am over it. I need some nice, cool fall weather. Thank you. But I love to be outdoors. I love to go on walks with Chewy. I love to go out with Catalina and my husband and like go out and do fun, adventurous stuff where we just go to a new place, right? And we go find a new dog-friendly restaurant and we have fun and we laugh and we go kayaking. You know, that's one of the ways I fill my cup. Another way I might fill my cup is like going by myself and to the nail shop and getting my pedicure and getting my nails done. That's you know, it's self-care, but it's also like that recharges me and it feeds my soul because it's time with me. And I have dates with myself once in a while where I will go get a pedicure, go get a foot massage and have a, there's a place I go to, they give you mimosas and the whole nine. And then I go out to eat at my favorite sushi restaurant. And then I go shopping alone, right? That's another way. So feeding your soul if you're not doing this stuff and you're just in this zombie walking routine of like go to work come home eat 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 shove the food down your throat eat a bag of m&ms in the car eat all this stuff because that's the only thing in your life that's bringing you any ounce of happiness that is exactly how you wake up one day and go holy shit how did i get here you got here because you were asleep You got here because you have no other way to cope with the things in your life. You got here because you're not doing anything nice for yourself because you have no love for yourself. You didn't get here because of anyone else in your life. You did not get here because of any circumstance in your life. You got here because of the choices that you decided to make. That's it. Is that hard for you to hear? Yeah, maybe for some of you. But I'm not here to hold your hand and coddle you and tell you that what you're doing right now is great because it's not. I would be doing you a disservice if I told you those things, right? My job is to hold up a mirror to you and your actions for you to realize like, oh shit. And I can do that in a confident way because I have been in your shoes. And so I can call you out on your stuff because I know what you're doing because I've done it right? And if people around you are just people that are like patting you on the back and telling you, well, it's okay. We, we all eat M&Ms sometimes. That's not helping you. And it's like, yeah, we all eat M&Ms sometimes, but when you're eating them every single night to go to bed and watch TV, that's a problem. That's a problem. And it's a problem, especially if you feel miserable, 
if you're overweight, if you feel miserable, if you're not happy with where you are in life, that is when it's a problem. If you're eating M&Ms every night and you don't care and you feel great and you're happy and your life is perfect, I don't even know why you're listening to this. But if you're doing that every night and you're fat and you're miserable and you hate your body and you're disgusted and you're, the, and you're constantly going, how did I get here? Then, like, this is so for you. This message is for you. And I'm so super passionate about what I say and what I talk about because you don't have to live your life like this. This is not the way you're supposed to be living your life. And let me tell you real quick, this was not part of my notes, but I'm going to just throw this in here because I think it needs to be said. I don't know when you think you're going to start doing what you say you're going to do. I don't know how long you think you have in this life. And I don't know if you assume that you're going to have all this time to have a do-over because you're not. Every single day that goes by is one day that you are choosing to live like this. And are you going to wake up in 10 years and five years and go, oh my God, how did I get here? Are you going to hit that next milestone in your life of age 30, 40, 50, whatever, and go, oh my God, I can't believe I'm still doing what I'm doing. Do you just think that poof, it's going to magically change just because you want it to? but yet your actions don't reflect what you really want to do. How's that working? Right? So if you're sitting here and you're like, yes, girl, this is speaking to me. Like I'm miserable. Like you have to take and make a decision that, all right, well, I'm going to keep living the way I'm living because now I like, I really know it because she told me this is what I'm doing. And I really, I really like this really speaks to me. So I know this is how I'm living or let me make a decision to make a decision. Let me decide that my life is worth so much more than the way I'm treating myself right now. Okay. So that's it, right? That's it. Um, I hope this resonates. I hope this is helpful. And if it is, I would love if you could go to iTunes and leave a rating and review. Let me know in the in the review how this podcast is helping you and your life. That means so much to me. And it helps other women find the podcast as well. And then if you're not a member already, I have a free Facebook group called you guessed it, Irresistible You, where you can go over and join totally free, have discussions with me, with the other women in the group, get support. And I do a weekly discussion thread in there around the podcast. So that is going to be the place where we go and we talk about the podcast, share your aha moments, post your questions, all of that good stuff. So that is listed here in the show notes for you if you are not a member go request. I will get you into the group as soon as possible. And also, if you haven't done it yet and you are not a member of my signature program, I invite you to sign up for my free training. In my free training, I will walk you through my three secrets to look and feel irresistible at any size without another diet. And in that training, in addition to those three secrets, I also share with you more about the Irresistible Use Signature Program. So if that is something that you are wanting to learn more about, if you're curious, if you're on the fence about it, I definitely suggest you coming into that free training so that you can learn more. And I love talking with you guys. I love having these discussions and doing these podcasts. I will catch you on the next one. And until then, stay irresistible.